the Primaris Chaplain on Bike, or sometimes, as I call it, the Outrider Chaplain. This is part two of my review of the kit, the model, my thoughts about it, and a look at me actually painting this in subassembly. Hopefully you have uh, joined me from part one, and if so, uh, please enjoy. If not, check out part one and then come back to part two. Let's do it. So, as I stated in part one, it is something I commonly do and that I really wanted to do on this kit, but I wanted to do it in parts of subassembly. And one of the ways I do that is to use something like skewers and blue tack and mount individual pieces that are easier to handle when I spray and sometimes hand brush. And so here I've got laid out some of the different pieces that I thought would work well with this kit. I figured out later that there are alternate ways to do it, uh, perhaps even in a way I would have preferred, but as it is, this has worked pretty well. And I even wanted to do the larger bike chassis, and for that I have something called an alligator clip attached to one of these bamboo skewers. And so that alligator clip is going to bite in really, really nicely, even on that little peg, and hold for some of what we're going to do. Another part to mount for painting is the base. I have a little technique of making my own paint handles, again with blue tack, and it works quite well for mounting the base, and that's going to make this really easy. I also have a little stand for my parts. I managed to get them arranged in such a way that they'll fit well. And now I'm going to be using my airbrush. I'm going to spray prime this model. I'm going to pull out a couple of my trusty Steinle Res primers. Uh, I've got gray and black. I think I may have some gloss black in here too for metallics and things. Those are some really excellent primers I'd love to use. And then I also have some flow improver because that's uh, pretty good to have as well. Now, going on with the base here, I'm just going to use some of my gray primer. And um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time discussing the painting techniques necessarily. There's a lot of videos out there for that. I'm not a painting master. I am always learning new things, and other people have things to teach me all the time. I've learned a lot from other painters, and so really I just want to talk about the kit while I'm painting here, and I'll add a little bit of know tidbits of my personal techniques and things so I'm just going over doing some some good coverage with the gray I wanted to use the gray because I knew this base would be, have some color to it um, the same with something that's gonna be red like the book that goes on top of this bike this bike has a lot of cool details it's got a lot of black but there are some colored parts and those come out better I think when they're not primed black um, and there's some cool stuff with this book really like that piece I'm gonna do the helmet for the chaplain himself, the skull, uh, paint the dark parts black or gray or whatever I want to use for the rubber parts, and the metal parts, and just getting in there and getting those details, never need to over prime, and then gonna move on to the bike. And that's where we'll start hitting up some black parts. The majority of the kit really lends itself to be primed black and painted black and then gone over with your detail colors. And so I still have a lot of these parts separate. Uh, you can see that with the subassembly I chose to do, I just have the bike chassis, the foot plate. Uh, the book is off. Uh, I do have the railing on the, on the side there. Um, I don't have the exhaust attached, and, and no part of the rider is attached at this time. So I'm just going to go and get a, a smooth of a base coat, sorry, a prime as I can. And then similar with the body, uh, the torso of the rider, making sure to get nice coverage. Got those really great metallic parts that I'm going to want to get later. And yeah, just liking the detail on this model. This model is Primaris, um, you know, so a lot of people will kind of get what I mean when I sort of say that and kind of pause where it's like, people really enjoy painting Primaris. I know that it's mainly for two reasons uh, uh this is okay it's an opinion but it's my opinion <laughs> it's a strong opinion but i think it's true i think a lot of people would agree that they're bigger 
And because of the 3D modeling that's used to make these type of kits, they are also they also have really nice consistent you know uh, detail and scaling and things like that and so um, that's just that's just kind of why I think it's they're so much more popular uh, they're, they're modern you know and so as we're going through here I've moved on to color I started with that base as you saw I put put down some of my earth color and then now I'm onto my actual black base coats that I want uh, it's a good idea to even if you prime black to go over with a black. And then my next step is metal, Vallejo metal color guys. Super good. And you'll see it go on. It's it's awesome out of an airbrush. It's awesome out of a hand brush. You can just see it cover this exhaust right here. And uh, did, the, did the exhaust black prime and it's just so easy. It just goes right on. You don't even, you almost don't even have to thin this. In fact, you, you might not have to, uh, but love that color that's steel and I'm actually gonna go in and I don't mind doing parts of the bike even though I've already painted my black I'm gonna go in and paint airbrush steel and underneath it on these side bits because it's just faster it's faster to go back for me and touch up the other plates than it is to try and get a brush and all the nooks and crannies inside of there under there I'm just gonna spray that in there uh, and go and fix fix any mistakes later. And honestly, like when it comes to weathering, you can you can leave some of that overspray on some of it if you really wanted to. So, so this is Vallejo German Gray that I'm putting on the wet palette. This is kind of my go-to for a lot of rubber items, things that I don't want black, that I want flexible. Um, it I, I use it for other things too, but you see I'm gonna use it on the tires. It is it's a black gray. It's part of their model color range. It goes on really, really well as a base coat, too. It, it has great coverage, um, but it's it's kind of cool black gray. Um, it doesn't really look blue, but it kind of does. You can kind of see this effect as it's going. And so uh, I'm taking advantage of, a su of the sub-assembly that I've done with this model. This model is really excellent for sub-assembly. Now you can put it into a lot of parts like I did. I have a ton of sub-assembly parts that I'm doing here, but I'm taking advantage of how it's done here. You can see I've got a smaller brush. I'm gonna put that in those soft armor joints, the same color as I've done on the tires, and it works really, really well. It takes shade, and it looks like that soft joint. Really enjoy that. And now here, when I did the earlier section, I ended up with some type of mark in the paint and so I'm gonna get brave and I'm actually gonna go back in here and clean this out and one thing that I'm gonna do in any of my videos is if I make mistakes like this I'm gonna show it I'm gonna show techniques for fixing it and so this is it sometimes you just gotta go in and sandpaper your paint <laughs> so join me on that <laughs> sort of trip <laughs> as they happen um, managed to make that work pretty well so on to some of our other detail colors, doing the uh, the leathers. I tend to stick with browns on leathers because I think black is uh, often overrepresented on the models. It doesn't it doesn't stand out as well? So now we're on everybody's favorite part, which is the skull. Everybody loves a skull, and it's kind of a running gag with some people that there's too many skulls in 40k. <laughs> but but I freaking love skulls. Uh, what's cooler than that? I mean, it's metal, right? <laughs> so. Um, I'm using Rickhart Flesh. Uh, it's GW paint. A lot of people know that one. I like I like GW's base paints pretty well. There's a couple that aren't as good, but Rickhart Flesh is one of the more useful ones, and it works really well for bone. Also works well for the book pages you see there. I'm not painting it there. I'm painting the red. So I'm going to use um, corn red on the book. Another GW Citadel uh, base paint, and uh, it's going to do really well with uh, with washes and things and I really love the book I love the books on the bikes I have some Dark Angels stuff as well and so there's some books with those guys and I'm just gonna go back in and clean up some of the metallic overspray painting on black and uh, skipped ahead uh, because you don't want to see me paint on black all the time and I'm actually doing some of the gold details you can see I've already got the red on the bolt rifles and I'm doing retributor armor on the halo around this skull and the skull will also get gold and uh, I've gone and done an interesting thing with 
the gold here on this model, um, I have decided to base it in Retributor. And I actually changed that later, and I'll talk about that as I get there, but I'm, it has to do with the Vallejo model color, uh, metal color paints that I found. But Retributor armor is still a favorite of mine. I still like it. I, I like it as just a gold paint or even as a base for other techniques of paint. And so uh, this model, you're going to have a lot of gold detail unless you decide to paint it something else. But this model has a lot of good spots for things like Retributor armor, like the Crozius here. And this is a cool Crozius. Um, this, is, this model actually has some great opportunities for modification, too. I could totally see cutting the weapon, like if you wanted a chapter-specific Crozius, I've done something like this before in a different model, I might showcase that at some point, but you could uh, cut it right below where the ribcage on that Crozius is and swap in another symbol. You could put a Blood Angel symbol on there. You could use like the the um, uh, banner topper from the Sanguinary Guard banner, chapter banner type stuff. You could do it from any chapter. Uh, you could put all sorts of stuff. You could put 3D printed bits on there, like whatever you want. The sky is the limit if you're clean. And so the bike having its nice hard edges, I'm going to go in with some Incubi Darkness and do a bit of uh, first tier edge highlighting. And one thing I'll go ahead and talk about real quick about this paint job that you're going to see is it is tabletop. I am painting this to my tabletop standard. By the end of this, it will not be a finished high-level paint job, by, in my opinion, okay? Maybe it is in your opinion. That's cool. I appreciate that, especially, especially that I feel like that's a compliment. But um, for me, this is going to be a tabletop standard paint job that I can take to the next level by the time we get to it. And, and this would be pretty quick. I, I would have done this bike in basically a day. You know, not a full day. <laughs> it's like, you know, my afternoons or something like that. Um, so, moving on to the backpack, which is pretty cool. This is a pretty simple backpack on this guy. A lot of these models tend to have more detail in them, but this one, except for a couple of spikes on there, this is your standard Primaris backpack. And uh, I tend to go ahead and paint uh, these vents metallic on pretty much most of my models, regardless of where they come from, which chapter I mean, but... You know, you paint them as you like. This is some more of that uh, Vallejo metal color. Steel. Uh, you saw me paint it in airbrush, now I'm br hand brushing it. It goes on super well. I, I just can't say enough good stuff about this, these types of paints. Uh, or seem to keep it on camera. <laughs> so, I'm gonna get better at this. Uh, at the same time, I'm showing the videos. I'm learning video editing. I'm learning, uh, you know, talking trying to reduce my extra garbage words <laughs> when I talk and stuff like this, so you guys let me know. And so, uh, go moving on to the cowling on the exhaust. We've got yet another Vallejo metal color paint, which this time is copper, and I recently found that one. I love it. It goes on so well. I'm going to show off that a lot in videos. Alright, so I'm moving on to washes now, so I guess I'm um, skipping ahead a good amount as I go through this. It's not about a painting tutorial, it's not that, so um, depending on what the item is, I'm going to throw on a pretty heavy wash, like I did for the book there. The book's going to look you know, a little used, and the skull too. Um, you're going to see, because this is a certain level that I knew I was going to get to, I knew I was going to do this at tabletop, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to darken it down pretty well, and I mean... On the skull, I'm actually using uh, sepia wash. I'm not using, or sepia, as, as you like to say it. I'm not using uh, Agrax on that. I'd use it on the book. But now moving on to mechanical parts, I'm always going to try to use a black wash at some point, you know, unless I want it super duper clean. But this is gloss, and that is so it'll go into the recesses. And then here I've got kind of my go-to technique on... Uh, things that need to be white. <laughs> things that need to be white, like wings, for instance, uh, which actually didn't have to be in this case, but I thought that the white would be a good breakup. I uh, did this for my Sanguinary Guard, and uh, it's another Blood Angel model, so the uh, single wing on his left pauldron is going to get the same treatment. This is Celestra Gray, and then I'm going to go over that with um, another lighter gray. What is the name of that? Can't remember. <laughs> Think of it later. 
we're going into actually uh, setting up putting the kit together because I'm at a stage where I wanted to go ahead and start adding uh, some of the parts together to do some of the painting the final stages of the painting really I had gone through and done a lot of the details and so this is a scary a scary part where if you're gonna put on plastic cement it eats through paint it it is made to melt plastic together it does not glue them so much as it welds them glues them together so you want to be deliberate you want to be careful you want to be neat with your glue if you're going to do this the way I have done it right and so this is also where I will do a similar technique with the exhausts the exhausts need to go on before the legs on this kit specifically if you want to do it in sub-assembly and get underneath all those details right and uh, I don't think it's hard to do these sub-assemblies y'all I think that it's in fact the smarter way to do it if you're patient you know especially with your gluing if you want to glue like this and you're patient and you don't over glue or over cement you're gonna do it and you'll see here I'm gonna put it in the socket in the leg where that blue tack was the paint did not get in I don't even have to scrape any paint off to help with that I just need to make sure there's not too much glue in there and I will say, actually, I had a little issue with this leg getting getting it to fit on. I should have put that on before the torso and let that be a lesson to you guys. Especially with that left shoulder pad on. It was really the purity seals that got in the way. And so now we're moving on to putting the bike on the base itself. I've done a lot of work on the base that you don't see. Um, but it was, it was a lot of uh, different grays and things. I'm just going to dry fit his his right leg in there because he he has his right leg holding the bike up on a slight uh, lean. And so um, because the plastic cement gives me a little bit of working time on this particular kit, and this is a great kit, this is not a problem in the kit, it actually helps. I'm going to dry fit that leg in there and make sure that it fits flat before I glue the leg in. That the foot is not raising up off of the rock and then... I'm gonna make sure to just hold it in place there a bit and then I'll be able to glue this leg in and you're gonna actually see me right here I'm gonna put this cement in there and I think there's too much on there so I'm gonna find something slightly absorbent which in this case is one of those bamboo skewers the tip it'll actually soak up a little bit of that extra cement even the tip of my finger getting a tad of it off of there so long as I keep it off the paint I'm very careful I'm a little practiced at it so and then I get it in there nice and carefully get a little bit of pressure and this guy's gonna be sitting on his foot you're gonna see in just a second pretty pleased with how this turns out because he's such a cool kit you know I really really wanted to make sure he comes out well now moving on to placing the book and the book is a little bit fiddly attaching it because of those chains that come up off of the bike and then also off of the book I'm using the thin cement here and even though I've painted those in that steel if I just add just the tiniest amount where the uh, overlap of the top chains will fit there we should be totally fine and as you'll see here I've got it in that peg slot where the book fits I've got them lined up I get them on there and because I'm not overdoing that that cement uh, we're gonna look pretty good by the end of getting this book on there I am actually really pleased with how that turned out. Uh, I know I said I was pleased with the other part, but really pleased with this as well because, you know, that that could be a tough one. You might have to go back and paint that one if you're not real careful. Um, and so th that's, a, that's a neat detail. I really love how they did the chains on this. Um, and so we're kind of going over the assembly here. Uh, you're, you're, you're basically seeing it up to a certain point where I had it painted. Um, I'm actually going to go in and show the second part of my white uh, technique here, which is, it, it's, it's really more for wings than in almost anything else that's white, because uh, it was Ultawan Gray. Ultawan Gray was the second lighter color, but this was uh, contrast paint, and I wasn't a huge fan of contrast to start with, but that's Apothecary White, and Apothecary White does shading on white so well. Uh, so I'll, I'll move on from that real quick because we're looking at the skull here, and you can see I've done a lot of skull in the uh, work on the skull in the interim, 
getting all those details on. I used a lot of the black, I used the silver, I used the, uh, the, the hoses, the gray, but that is Bloodletter to get a little bit of basic red glow on his eyes on top of that Ulthuan gray. And so, this is the secret sauce that I was talking about earlier where I ended up using Vallejo metal color gold and people will probably look at the gold and be like, oh, what's that gold? It's like a really pale gold. And it is, but it's so bright. It's so bright. I did a lot of work on this guy on the on the back end that you don't see here, um, including going in with some Reichland Flesh Shade gl uh, Gloss Wash uh, on top of that gold. But almost all of the gold on this entire model is now redone with... Vallejo metal color gold because I love it so much. I started it on a different project and I love it so much I just put it all over this guy too, and I think I'm gonna keep using it. Honestly, it's my favorite I do want to get better at transitions of the shades of gold Something I'm working on uh, most definitely and there's a ton of things that I did on this model that I haven't talked about um, But hey, it's 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 stuff that we can look at for later and Look this kit. I mean basically given my thoughts here. It's awesome. Who doesn't love bikes? I love bikes. Uh, I used to have a motorcycle. I've definitely got a passion for it. Um, it just bikes are just so cool, and they're good. They're great models. This model is excellent on a table. Um, not in every army, but in a lot of armies, it's so good. And look, this is it. This is how it's turned out for me. Uh, hopefully, you like how it looks. There's definitely some stuff I'm going to point out here that I want to do more to take it to the next, the next tier. But this is tabletop, y'all. I mean, this is this is I mean, better than in some cases, but uh, you know, for tournament style. But you know, I'd be proud to put this anywhere as it is. But showing here, you can see like I've done a couple of things that I would go back and redo, like the highlighting I did on that metal panel. It should actually be what I was pointing there is it should be at a different angle to represent a better looking highlight. You can see there where I've actually gone back and replaced. Uh, fixed that one line I was working on and I'm showing off here that I've done a a, a, a gloss like semi-gloss varnish on this because that's really good for gaming it's tough but it does have shine and later on I would go back and do that matte uh, pointing out there that I'd like to highlight up the skull also talking about the uh, the grips on the handlebar and the weapon of those would get some highlighting they're like pretty dark corn red there's actually some uh, blemishes in the surface from the wash where there's just a little bit of overspill uh, there's gonna be some highlight opportunities uh, still in like the, the the gym on the blood drop even the wing really um, a bit in on the halo there's some work to be done and definitely on the book. The book is a bit uh, monotone here. The wash really helps. Uh, it really helps in the lock and the chains and stuff too. And uh, but I would, you know, if I was going to take it up higher, I'd definitely go back in and work on those edges on that book. And here too, the base. It's very, very simple right now. You know, we're going to be looking at things like grass tufts snow perhaps if you wanted to I haven't fully decided my blood angels are not on snow so I would probably do some a little bit of grass I tend to do urban bases quite a lot ruined urban um, you know I've already got some work done on the leather the leather handle there um, just gonna get a little better look at it to get some highlight on that so that's actually pretty good but uh, I would go in and smooth out those uh, those highlights on that bookmark for instance those are some pretty hard edge highlights those need some some transition help and uh, you know every now and then I'll go in and I'll look at things and I'll see like there's some seam lines on those tires you can still see I wish I had been able to get them on time but it just happens uh, got to do those little those little lamps inside uh, the wheel well and you know um, even uh, my edge highlighting the edge highlighting is uh, like I said only level one of what you would normally see edge highlighting. You'd normally go like one or two highlights higher for a higher tier paint job if you're doing edge highlighting at the higher standard. So those uh, those edge highlights there would go higher as well. That's that's not a super, uh, a lot of contrast on it. And so that's it. The bike chaplain is finished. Uh, my overall thoughts is 
this is an excellent model. It's it's almost a must have for a Space Marine player. It works super well on the table in a lot of chapters. And besides that, it's it looks excellent. Uh, it's a fun build. You don't have to do sub assembly, but if you want to, you'll be able to do similar to what I've done. Uh, and you know, if not, either way, it's a great collector's piece. Hope you enjoyed. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, consider subscribing, and definitely share. If you have ideas for future video topics, put them in the comments below, as well as any other questions. I'm always learning, and I'll be interested to see what you all have to say. Bye for now.